Britain has got some fantastic historical buildings. Unfortunately, it's also got a lot of buildings that are falling to rack and ruin. And we need to save them, because once they've gone, they've gone. Now, have you ever been sat in the car, driving along, gone past this building and gone, wow, it's fantastic. Why hasn't somebody done something with it? Well, that's exactly what I did 25 years ago, except I didn't drive past. I stopped and got out. The name of that building was Paul Home Tower, and I decided it had to be saved. And to do that, it needed somebody with passion to push the project forward. My name's Simon Taylor. I've never saved a tower before. I've never made a film either. But that's exactly what we're going to do. And I want you to follow the highs and lows and the story of the tower. try and explain the situation with the road. For 25 years the entrance to the tower has been down along here and through this gate. There's been no problems. I've never asked for permission. I don't own this road. Never asked for permission. There's never ever been a problem. But something happened last year. This fence went up. This sign went up. This chap across here, he said he owns this road. He's been quite abusive and threatening. Now it's not the tower, but it is part of the tower story. So I think we should include it. Now I've got some clips, and if you are of a sensitive nature, perhaps ought to turn away. It's my road, not yours. You have no right to access on that road past that sign. So get that through your head. I want it now. I'm sick of you. You've caused enough trouble for everybody else. What is your problem? Hey, you. Tell me what the problem is. With your audience. Please get off my land, will you? That's better. No problems. Uh, Nobody's blocking the road because uh, you've just driven uh, past. Uh, So what can you hear? Hear the birds, you can hear the wind, but you can't hear the contractors. You can't hear the contractors because I've just stuck a sign up there and the site is shut. And it's shut for safety issues. It's the second time I've had to shut it now. It's just not good enough. Come and have a look at this. Look at this. See this sign? See this picture? It shows a hole in the scaffold. It's exactly what we got up there. If you've got a hole in the scaffold, you don't put a sign up to advertise it. You fix the hole. This isn't the first notice I put up. Five weeks ago I issued a prohibition notice to the contractor. They still haven't fixed the work and I don't understand what's happening. Because it's only two days work to put everything right. So why wouldn't they do it? I have to watch this space, that's all I can say. The plan was you guys come to site today and have a look around the roof and see what work we've been doing. It's really quite good. Fortunately, we've got a problem. The contractor has said no filming allowed on site and the lads say they'll walk off if we film. So we can't tell you the story, because they're stopping us telling the story. What happens next? I don't know, but we're in a real pickle, and it's got to be resolved one way or the other. So uh, what we're going to do now is going to ring the director, a chap called Peter, and ask if we can get an explanation out of him why we're not allowed on site. As far as I'm concerned, you can go on, you can go on site now. 
Yes. We'll have a chat in the morning when I come down to site and we'll work something through forward because I need to get this work done and get out of your hair and I'm sure you want it out of your hair. So you you go there now, I'll speak to Darren, I'll okay with Darren, although Darren's not happy about it. I'll see if I can overcome that further with Darren. You go and do your filming and we will meet in the morning and we'll discuss it and get it signed out. Are you all right with that? I'm all right with that. These lads are due a coffee anyway, so that fits in well. All right. Thank you, Peter. I'll see you tomorrow. Do. Good man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, thank you. That's a bit of a turnaround. Today's a good day. I can show you guys around site. The scaffold's been sorted, everything's been signed off as safe, so we can go up the top there and I can show you the tower. Just look at this scaffold now, it's absolutely perfect. These ladder beams they put in, they take all the load out to the outside wall, so there's no load on this ceiling below. It's exactly what we wanted. These are the walls. This was all covered in trees and ivy and broken rubble. And these lads have cleaned it all off and got down to a sound base. I just want to explain to you this concrete beam and why we're putting a concrete beam in a brick structure. This building is falling apart, it's all frail, it's 600 years old and the brick bond is broken and there's rubble and there's been trees growing in and all sorts of things. So how do you put a new roof and a new top on a building if it's all broken down below? And the answer is, clever idea, concrete beam. I'll show you how it works. See this pin? It's not just randomly knocked in there, it's very precise. These lads here, they've worked out this is the height, the top of this pin is the height of the concrete beam that we're going to cast in. So we need to take this level all the way around the building because it's millimetre perfect. And by level we mean it's all got to be at the same height. Now I'll show you how we do that. We use something called an engineer's level, a dumpy tilting level, an automatic level. You could use a, use a pipe full of water if you wanted, but we're going to use a level. And we take this all the way around and that sets the height of the concrete beam. So what we do is put an ink mark on the scaffold tube and that means you can come along anytime you want, use your spirit level and transfer the mark onto the building. So what we've done, we've taken the level from that pin over the far side there, we marked it on the scaffold poles and then from the scaffold poles we transferred it to this pin here. And then these lads put a piece of string around here and this string line is tight to the other end and it gives them the line of the bricks. And this level here, what's level is this, Mark? Uh, that, that's the uh, underneath. Underneath, so this is the underneath of the concrete beam we want to cut. And it'll be millimetre perfect. So all that work an engineer does gets reduced to a piece of string. That's all these lads ever need, a piece of string. Unfortunately, where I'm sat is where the Merlon used to be. You see the Merlon's gone, I was really upset that happened. But it's gone. I think we better say it was an error. It wasn't supposed to go, it was an error. It's gone now. The most important thing is we've got to move on. We've got to save this tower. We're using these timbers here as formwork. That's just basically a mould. And you put steel in the bottom in this case and steel is very good in tension and concrete is very good in compression and when you put the two together you've got a really strong structural beam to demonstrate how weak the walls are look at this here this is a very weak point it's a strong point look at it there you can't take any weight on it very weak so what that concrete beam does it spans across the top and it puts all the load on this bit there and the outside wall and all the strong pieces and these weak bits they don't have any load on anymore. Real big day today, we're going to pour the concrete beam around the top and that's going to bind in the top of the tower together. So that three and a half cubic metres of concrete and the contractor was going to use the plastic bucket. 
we reckon that would take about five days to do. There are other ways of pouring concrete. You could use one of these. I don't want to concern you, but we've got a bit of a problem that's looming. The architect has just done a valuation for the contractor, and it's looking like the contractor's going to be asking for maybe £15,000 of overspend. Now, that's only a projection, we don't actually know. But the problem is, the sum of money we've got for the tower is fixed. So if we think we're going to overspend, we can't start the work. That means fifteen grand. that could be the roof. At the moment in time, the roof is in jeopardy. You've had a look, things are starting to move now, so you don't want to go away far because they're going to start moving fast. So come back soon, watch the story of the tower.